buzz words everybody is talking about in the industry be it mechanical or be it your healthcare be it your aerospace and whatever industry it is about these are the buzz words that are being talked today one is your artificial intelligence machine learning and then your deep learning now let's have a clear understanding on of all the three so that you you won't get confused on what is what right now if you look at this okay so it looks like a concentric circle where the deep learning sits in between uh, in the midst over it is the machine learning and over it is your artificial intelligence right now what is what is deep learning we'll just have a, a look at these three with our traditional example just have a look at this figure what it is yeah it's a sugar cane machine maker right so how people used to make sugar cane from this yeah we have to feed the sugar cane after with its ingredients like lemon and ginger or whatever is preferable with with ice or without ice or whatever it is and it has to be fed into the machine so it will squeeze out the juice is it or not and this uh, juice will be collected on the part which is kept here which is of light green color and when the chunk comes out the person who is operating this will see the sugar cane and if he tries to and if he is able to be convinced with the chunks that it is dry and it won't produce any other thing he will leave it otherwise again he will feed this process keeps on repeating n number of times and it's all how many times you need to feed it depends on the person who is creating it right if i am convinced with okay 3/4 of a glass thick juice is enough i'll stop at that point i won't go further making it into chunk and dry output right so this is what your machine learning algorithm will do for you right what these algorithms will do it will take the data data in this case is your sugar cane right from you it will try feeding it and execute the algorithm what is the result of execution here it is your juice right so this machine learning algorithm will give you an output you can evaluate and if you are convinced with the evaluation okay otherwise what can you do if you feel like the juice is too thick what can you do again you can feed in the machine so you can rerun the algorithm any number of iterations by varying the parameters let's say if the sugar juice is not enough and it has gone chunk what can we do we can add in some more sugar can you can add in some more data likewise there are different ways to increase the accuracy that's what the machine learning algorithm will do okay now let us look at this what is that yes again it is a sugar cane juice maker but what happen it's too abstract in the sense that if we feed a sugar cane into it okay so we don't need to bother about uh, how the chunks are being generated so internally it will be fed up and it will be squeezed or smashed like in such a way that only the chunks will be left out and given with the juicy output right so that's what your deep learning algorithms will do again the algorithms will run mostly in a similar manner at times it will vary but what happens we don't need to bother about what's happening inside on to a deep learning in most of the cases right so be the sugar cane juice is made with this using your machine learning technique or with this using your deep learning technique what is expected out of this is this right so whatever result that is coming out of that has to be in a presentable format okay how to bring in that presentation so that's where this third layer which is called as your artificial intelligence comes in okay this artificial intelligence techniques tries to add up a presentation to your data to make it in a more comfortable way okay so it may you may add some kind of uh, add ons to it okay let's say the sugar cane juice may be mixed with ice cream i don't know how the taste will look like or uh, taste taste i'm just telling right so that's how it is so the presentation is given in a overall view that is by using the ai technique hence now if you look at this diagram it would be much more better with an, a better understanding you can get deep learning sits at the core which means the machine learning algorithm covers deep learning ai covers both machine learning as well as deep learning okay so having understood this okay now let us look at a very common example of what we do what is this yeah it's a google map okay without this google map the world will get stunned for a minute right if it doesn't work for 10 minutes that's all 
people will get stunned without knowing how to do where to do where to go and all those things and the entire features are given by this application only how does it work if you look at if you want to look at the directions you can very simply map this to a digistrace algorithm is it or not the shortest distance algorithm given the source and your destination might be anything else so it is running at the back to give you a proper output it's running at the back to give you the number of users is using it at a particular time how many requests are going out and coming in if you are adding a stopping point now likewise there are hundreds of application that we use in our day to day life that is running with the use of this either deep learning machine learning or combination of this along with ai okay so to name a few i have listed out something so facebook your friends tagging if you take a picture and post it on the facebook all your friends name are tagged how it's by using this right then you have ola which is detecting your location automatically and gives you an approximate uh, um, expenditure on how you have to spend on your time right you have alexa as your chatbot now you look at that uh, uh, elder man okay on the advertisement of alexa is enjoying his life with this right now you have self driving cars tesla and you have book my show which is automatically adjusting the amount for a particular ticket and the dynamic pricing is being obtained based on the uh, requirement of the uh, film uh, seats as of now then you have hotstar every day my mother used to open the hotstar and say a particular word in tamil automatically it opens up how does it do that's the advantage of deep learning and machine learning and you have netflix i guess in this time period all of you would be possibly interested in this right so it's not only what is listed out it's some common examples of what we use and the applications is much more and is in all domains okay for all this what is required you have data 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 everywhere right so all are generating the data who is generating these data it's you myself now if i am recording it that's also a data if you are listening it and if you are giving some chats or some messages on the uh, chat box that is also a data all are producing data and not only the human beings producing a data be it a living thing or a non living thing right so these uh, ca cameras on road is capturing videos and images uh, within the in a seconds time period or a milliseconds time period that is also generating if you look at the proportion of uh, the size of the data that is increasing it's amazing and if it goes like this what is the purpose of it right now before going to into the purpose okay so i hope all of you are aware of this this is the pandemic that's going on around the world let's pray for the betterment of you, the entire world and what is this yeah it's the novel corona virus that's happening all around the world now let us see what uh, uh, the uh, world health organization is uh, trying to get out of it okay so our intention is to find whether uh, uh, a person is covid infected or not right now how do you know what are the parameters see they have given some norms listing that if a person has fever continuous cough and if he has problem in breathing and if he is feeling too tired and they have muscle aches there may or may not be a covid so how these things are being measured you know fever is measured in terms of temperature cough frequency it means how many number of coughs dry coughs you have per second or per minute when you have problem in breathing yes or no tiredness muscle and yes when these information are collected from a patient you will have n number of patients of course be it a patient or a normal person if these symptoms are being found we need to collect their name address and history history in the sense whether they are diabetic they are already uh, problematic with uh, pneumonia and so on their medical history needs to be understood right now how these details will be stored it's obvious that this is the only way right in whatever be the database format you follow not a matter so we want to store these details like fever cough breathing tiredness muscle pain name address diabetic and finally after testing you can fill this column right whether they are infected with covid or not 
and this history will be and each and every row corresponds to one patient and you can store the data in the history right you take any problem in the world and the, your first and foremost intention is to find out what are the features that contributes to this particular problem right having done that what is your next step it is to the you take any problem in this world okay so how do we know come to know about it it is only by means of identifying the cause of those problems right what are these cause are called okay one minute okay so these cause are what we call as the features right these are the features or attributes let me write it as a r slash f so these are the features or attributes that forms the necessary component of uh, uh, identifying or we do we want these are the different features that corresponds to this particular patient okay so every patient will have differing values for all those things i have filled up one sample data for you so the patient p2 if he is having 106 degree uh, fever cough 10 times per millisecond or 10 sorry 10 times per second breathing problem is tiredness muscle pain his name is name and all those things and whether he is after he was tested and he was positive so that's how this data sheet is filled up okay so having understood that we have got enough data okay data about this virus and uh, we have gone in uh, got gone in to collect so many different uh, information about different patients and we have stored in this format what is the use of it okay storing n number 100 patients details 1000 patient detail lakh crores detail it's of no use if you simply store it right all this data has to be converted properly into a information okay so what is an information okay so this information i haven't written uh, in corresponds to covid but uh, this is in corresponds to different thing let us see later so here these are some of the information like facebook may be the preferred social media might be the analysis result of this this week the new joiners on social media may be reduced by sorry reduced by 10% is a report given by facebook the most trending info now is to make homemade masks right so these are the corresponding information only these informations will add business value and that's what you are expected to do using machine learning okay so it's not at all enough to have a data of this kind rather it's what is an information that you are going to produce out of it max makes you distinct from others now coming back to whatever data we have collected okay i have written some sample info you it could be anything or any according to your requirement so can you find how many are having more than optimal temperature yes you can find it's just making a simple analysis on column 1 that's it how many patients are there from a particular place yes using the address column you can find given the data to find whether the patient is covid infected or not okay if i am giving a new data let's say i am giving a temperature and all those things yes you can see how many patients are from a district how many diabetic patients have covid okay and it could be many more okay given the data you can perform any kind of analysis right now if you look at the first scenario how can you find how many are having more than optimal temperature yes by simple greater than or equal to operator because we know the what is the optimal temperature of human being it will lie between 98 to 99 or sometimes it may go till 100 other than that it's a well known fact that the people are having fever right it's a simple mathematical calculation that you can do why machine learning is important okay machine learning has to be adopted in such a case where the size of the data set is such a way that human cannot compute okay the variability of data is more okay and the type of the information needed is what a human cannot compute let's say um if you have uh, one crore data okay so uh, there is uh, no a human being can't find okay so use of manpower 
that much of manpower is not at all required when we are left out with this which comp computational convenience then exact match of tuple is not what we require this is the most important uh, understanding of machine learning so if you are given with a data set you are uh, the machine learning algorithms are not expected to match an entire row and to say whether s or no okay so these algorithms will run on the entire data be it a lakh or a crore data it will try to identify the pattern that is there exist among all the features and accordingly it will say okay this will be clearly understood when we move back in looking at the algorithms so that is what is the necessity of having a machine learning for this data set right so what is the take away from this uh, uh, session so you should have understood what is ml versus dl versus ai that is difference in ml dl ai then what is the need for machine learning you should have understood and uh, you, sh you should have a better understanding on what is AI, ml and what is a data set how to collect data what is a feature and how the data set looks like is what you are expected to understand from session 1 thank you we'll have we'll resume soon in session 2 thank you